Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to wrap up talking about bringing footage into Media Composer because we've really gotten in depth. I like to call this a bit of a masterclass when it comes to getting in and bringing footage in and what you need to do with it. Do you need to consolidate it? Do you need to transcode it? The problem is, is that a lot of people get confused based on their workflow. What really is the best option for them when it comes to should I consolidate it high resolution? Should I transcode it low resolution? Should I transcode matching the frame rate of the footage? Should I just let it do whatever I want it to do? There can be so many questions involved in the process based on what you are doing. Are you editing a documentary? Are you editing a music video? Are you just getting in and throwing together a 30 second promo of something that you shot that day? What is the best way to go through and transcode that media so that you know that it's right and you know that it's going to look the way that you want it to and give you the result that you want in the very end. And in this lesson, by the time we're done, you'll be able to pick the workflow that's right for you and get the footage the way that you want so that we can move on to the actual editing process inside of Media Composer. All right. Now, as always, I want to remind you that if you find this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media. If you haven't subscribed yet, smash that subscribe button. We're on our way to 9,000 subscribers, and I just want you to help me get the word out there about Avid Media Composer, so that way if other editors are out there having issues, hopefully one of these tutorials will be helpful to them. And as always, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys. And if you are looking to get Media Composer licenses, head on down to the notes for this lesson. I've put the three most common links for Media Composer licenses down in those show notes. You can head on over and use the coupon code of MC101 to get a 5% discount when purchasing your Media Composer license. And last but certainly not least, I do want to mention that I do offer one-on-one -on -one training if you think that you or your team might need it. You can always send me an email, kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. I am more than happy to jump online. I record all of the one-on-one -on -one training that I do to provide it to you after the fact so that you have it as a reference. If you ever need to go back and take a look at things, you'll always have that one-on-one -on -one training available to you if you need it. All right, so let's Command or Alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. And before we get rolling, I just want to actually answer a question that was posted in one of the previous tutorials asking about applying frame flex uh, adjustments to all clips. And I just want to show you how that works. What I'm going to do is I have two clips here that have different aspect ratios, 1.55 to 1 and 1.90 oh to 1. And what I'm going to do is just select both of them. And I'm going to go to my source settings and inside of the frame flex tab, what I'm going to do is just set the frame flex aspect ratio to match that of the project or the timeline that I'm actually currently working in, which is 16 by 9. And once I've done that, I'm simply going to navigate down here to apply all and I'm going to say OK. And now you'll see that if I come back in and go to my source settings inside of frame flex, it's set to 16 by 9 there. And with the red clip, it is set to 16 by 9 here as well. Now, I also did mention in a previous lesson that I was going to talk a little bit about playback rates and audio. As far as playback rates go, this is where you might get into a situation where, let's say, the camera shot at like three frames per second, and you want to actually get in and utilize that inside of Media Composer. You'll notice that you have the playback frame rate option to be the clip's frame rate or the project's frame rate. In most cases, to be honest, I don't normally ever go in here because I don't get footage that was actually acquired like that. But you'll notice that you do have that option in here as well. If I come to the Alexa clip, you'll see inside of playback, this clip was actually shot at 24. And you'll see that I can actually in the audio tab get in and I can slip the audio here if I needed to. But again, I've never used it before and I've been editing a long time. So uh, I just wanted to show it to you just as something to keep in mind in the back of your head. All right, so that brings us to the meat and potatoes of this lesson. And really, it's something that's important to consider before you start working. And it's really important across any nonlinear editing application, Media Composer specifically. And that is, are you going to be working in an offline scenario or an online scenario or conceivably both? Now, the question, of course, then does come up of what is an offline versus what is an online? An offline scenario is you're going to be doing your rough cut inside of Media Composer potentially doing your final version, your high res version inside of Media Composer. But basically what you're going to be doing is taking your 
hours or days of content, depending on what you're going to be doing. If it's a documentary, you might have hours and hours and days and days worth of footage. And obviously, you don't have the hard drive space to bring that all in at high resolution. So what you're going to do is transcode everything at low resolution. And then when you're ready to finish, only re-bring back in or retranscode everything at high resolution, whether it's inside of Media Composer or outside of Media Composer, to do your final online. The online meaning the high resolution version. So keep that in mind. Offline, low resolution, low quality approval cut. Online, meaning final high resolution version. Now, in some cases, depending on your workflow, you might just be like, well, guess what? I'm just throwing something together. It's a 30 second spot of stuff that I shot today. I'm just working in a quote unquote online scenario. Everything's going to be high resolution. I'm going to throw it all in, transcode everything in high resolution, and we're done. Awesome. You can do just that workflow. You might say, I'm working on a documentary. I've got 42 hours worth of footage. I'm not going to be able to transcode all that at high resolution. I'm going to do everything at low resolution. I don't know where I'm going to finish it right now. Maybe I'll finish in Media Composer. Maybe I won't. But you know what? I'm going to work in an offline scenario until I make that final decision. So that's really the difference between the two. Offline is your rough cut. Online is a high resolution final cut version. So keep that in mind. All right. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to break down the three most common transcoding workflows based on how you're going to be editing and what you're going to be editing in your timeline. For example, the first option is you're going to be offlining in Avid Media Composer and finishing in another application like DaVinci Resolve or like Assimilate Scratch. The second option is you're going to offline in Media Composer and finish in Media Composer. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Last option, you're just going to do an online. Maybe you're doing like a 30 second promo. You don't have that much music. You just want to throw some footage in here, transcode it at the highest resolution and get working. All right. So let me show you the workflow for each one of these. And as I show it to you, you're going to better understand how you're going to get in and consolidate or transcode your footage based on how you work. Now, I say consolidate or transcode for the most part, the only time you'll be consolidating footage, remember, that's a rewrap at its highest resolution is if you're doing option three, just the online and media composer. Get in, consolidate it. It's already at high resolution. Start working. I mean, unless it's something ridiculous like an 8K uncompressed file that you would then really, you should transcode. Uh, but I'm just more or less talking about if you had some ProRes footage that you just needed to bring in, drop into your, you know, timeline cut down. You know, again, always consolidate or transcode. Don't ever work with linked media. Friends don't let friends work with linked media. All right. So let's talk about the first scenario. Offline and Media Composer finish in DaVinci Resolve. All right. These are important questions that as the editor or the assistant, you need to ask at the beginning because you need to understand what the best and proper workflow is as far as acquiring your media. So we're going to assume that we're finishing inside of DaVinci Resolve. So what does that tell me as an assistant or even as an editor? What that tells me is that frame flex, as far as being adjustable, is irrelevant to DaVinci Resolve because it doesn't understand any frame flex adjustments that we're going to make. So let me show you how this plays out. So let's take our red footage first. And I'm actually just going to do it on a single clip because, to be honest, it's really the same no matter which clip that we're working on. Uh, obviously, with raw footage, we're just going to have a little bit more options here. So I've removed the lookup table obviously because I want to show you how we're going to add that. Now, normally what I will do is I will, if the lookup table hasn't been added automatically, I'll say, okay, well, this is red footage. So I know that if it's red or if it's Alexa, that footage already has a lookup table in here for it because I've installed the red plugins. And I know that the log C to rec 709 lookup table is already in here as well. So all I have to do is come to the color adapter. I can drop that down. If I'm working with red footage, I can simply navigate right down here, red wide gamut log 3G10. I can apply that and say add. And if this was Alexa footage, what I would do is just come right down here to my Ari Alexa log C to rec 709 lookup table. I'd simply apply that and I'm good to go. Now, Remember, this is an offline. So the purpose of getting our footage in is to get it in looking proper and at low file sizes because I could be dealing with days of footage. If you're working on reality shows, you could have just, you know, hours and hours and days and days of footage. So you want to get in and you want to transcode this at its lowest resolution so the editor can work with it. All right. Basically compile everything and then send only what the online editor or the colorist in Resolve is going to need 
to get the project finished. Now, I might think that this shot is slightly underexposed, so maybe I need to come back into my link plugins. Maybe I'm just going to make an exposure adjustment of, I don't know, let's just make it of one. All right, there we go. I can come back now to color encoding. It's a little bit brighter now. I'm going to say that I'm happy with this. Now what I need to do is I need to get in and check what's happening with FrameFlex because I need to make sure that FrameFlex matches that of the current project that I am working in. I'm going to come over here. You'll see the footage's aspect ratio is 1.90 to 1. I see that FrameFlex has already been applied 16 by 9. I can see it here. And what I'm going to do is just get this matching pretty close. Now, to be honest, I'm not really going to worry too much about what's happening outside of the frame. I'm going to leave it centered. I'm going to say apply. I'm going to say OK. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to transcode this footage at low resolution for an offline. Let's right click. Let's navigate to consolidate transcode. And as we know, because this is a raw clip, it is not avid friendly. We do need to do a transcode. Easiest thing to select first is to always come down and simply select the drive you want to go to. I'll just select media three for the purposes of what we're doing. Now I could select transcode only linked media. I only have linked media in here, so it really doesn't matter. Now let's talk about the next option. What do you want to do with your footage? Do you want to mash it down to be the project's dimension? So basically to match that frame flex window, or do you want to keep it at the original sources dimensions, which in this case, if I drag down is 8192 by 4320. Now this is an offline. I don't need to worry about having it at its original resolution. That's something that I'll let the online editor and colorist worry about when they get it into DaVinci Resolve. So what I'm going to do when I transcode it is I'm going to transcode it at the project's dimensions. Remember, because we set frame flex correctly to match that 16 by 9 project aspect ratio, this will now make the footage look correct when I transcode it. Now you'll see that we have the option to keep the sources frame rate or to convert to the project's frame rate. What I will always do, always, 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 I know that's a lot of always, is I will come in and I will keep the source's frame rate. What does that really do? Well, you'll notice that as I switch back and forth, the target video resolution changes and actually the size of the file changes too. What this basically does by keeping the source's frame rate is remove DNX HD from the equation. All right, and it gives me DNX HR as an option. Now, Keep in mind, DNX HR is exactly for the purposes of what we're doing. It's for taking footage that doesn't match the aspect ratio of what we're working with or the frame rate of what we're working with. And it gives us a fantastic looking low resolution. That's why we're using low bandwidth codec for us to work with. All right. So if you're working in an offline scenario and you're transcoding tons of footage, always choose DNX HR low bandwidth. Now you'll see linked source scaling quality. Always leave that as full. Don't bother getting in and changing anything for that. But in an offline scenario, assuming you have your color encoding set correct and your frame flex set correct, what you're going to want to do is to bake those two parameters into your footage. Now I'm not going to convert any sample rates or bit depths or anything like that. I'm simply going to say transcode. You'll now see that what Media Composer is going to do is it's going to transcode this clip. And I want you to watch what happens with the clip when it appears in the bin, specifically at the video, the raster dimension and the images aspect ratio, because it's going to look exactly like the red footage does. Let's just give it a second here. Now, I'm not speeding anything up. What you're looking at is real time. Now, you can see now DNX HR low bandwidth, 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9. There's the original clip. You'll see, I can double click, looks good there. I can double click, it looks exactly the same there. The only difference, original red clip, an offline clip now for me to get in and edit my reality show with. Okay, so let's now talk. Now this was again, a scenario for DaVinci Resolve. Now, the reason that I said that frame flex information doesn't transfer over, let's say I wanted to reframe this shot and I know that I have, you know, it's like an 8K shot and I know that I can zoom in a bit. What I will do is actually in my timeline, I will use a 3D warp effect to get in and actually make adjustments that will transfer over to DaVinci Resolve. But don't worry, that's for a much later tutorial. This example here was specifically for an offline scenario. Okay, low resin media composer, finish in an application like DaVinci Resolve or assimilate scratch. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna delete this. 
is we're now going to talk about an offline and media composer where you're going to finish a media composer. All right. Again, exactly the same thing. I don't need to do anything to the clip because the source settings have been set correctly. Linked plugins good, color encoding's good, frame flex looks good, playback and audio is fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now right click and I'm going to come to consolidate and transcode. Again, you'll notice nothing has changed. I'm going to make sure that we are set to transcode. I'm going to make sure we're going to the drive I want to go to. In this case, because I'm going to do an offline in Media Composer, and I'm going to finish in Media Composer, maybe I want the flexibility of this larger frame where I can get in and slightly manipulate things, zoom in a little bit, adjust the frame flex, and make those minor adjustments. So instead of taking the clip and squashing it down to be 1920 by 1080, what I'm going to do, and you'll see right here, this is doing it as 1920 by 1080, 75 megabytes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to be the sources dimension. Now you'll notice that it didn't actually change the size. It's going to make the size maybe, I don't know, two to three times bigger. But remember, this is super low resolution quality here. So it's not going to be much different. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically transcode it at the sources dimension we're going to keep its frame rate and what we're going to do is still transcode at low resolution and what i'm going to do is in this case i'm not going to bake in color encoding and i'm not going to bake in frame flex because maybe i need to get in and make an adjustment to one or the other at a later time i'm going to deselect them for right now and I'm simply going to say transcode. Now it normally starts out saying it's going to take about two minutes. You'll see it speeds itself up. I'm just going to speed the whole process up here. It's going to take probably about 40 to 37 seconds. And once it's done, what you're going to notice is, is that a transcoded managed clip is going to appear in my bin here that matches the resolution, the raster dimension here of the original clip. It matches the aspect ratio. The only difference is, and you'll even see that it's in the right color space. The only difference here is that if I right click on the clip and come to source settings, the only setting that I don't have access to anymore is those linked parameters because this is no longer a raw clip. This is now a transcoded managed Avid Media, piece of Avid Media. But you'll notice that I still have the flexibility to get in and manage the color encoding and frame flex if I wanted to. Now you might be thinking, well, why would you need to do that after the fact? Don't worry, we'll talk about that in later tutorials. But I just wanted to show you this process as well, because now if I get in and I start doing my offline and media composer, maybe I make some adjustments to frame flex. When we go to do the online, all of that information stays there. We don't have to worry about any of it being lost by exporting and going to a different application. What we see is what we get. Now, to wrap things up, what I'm going to do is I'll just leave this clip here. I'm just going to come back to my desktop here, and I have a new clip in here just simply called shared footage. This is what I call standard typical workflow. You've gone out, you shot a bunch of stuff. It's 1920 by 1080. It's in Rec. 709 color space. It's 23976. Maybe it's MP4, something you have to transcode. You just want to basically throw it in and work with it. All you're going to do is you're going to use our quick link method option or alt on the keyboard to link to it quickly. You'll see there it is looking perfect, ready to consolidate or transcode. So what we're going to do is simply navigate up, right click. Because this is an H.264 codec, I know that it's not Avid friendly, so I do want to get in and transcode this clip and we want to work with it at a higher resolution. So I'm going to make sure transcode selected. Now, of course, the question comes in, what should you set this to? The project's dimension, source's dimension? What I always tell people is it's better to get into the habit at the beginning of always using the source's dimension and keep the source's frame rate. Guess what? If the frame rate matches that of the project, you're all set to go. If it matches the raster dimension of the project, perfect. You're all set to go. You don't have to worry about anything. Again, what we want to do is set this to be a better quality, standard quality, high quality, or high quality 10-bit. I'll just choose high quality here because this is definitely not a 10-bit clip. And as far as applying color encoding, we really applied no LUTs to this footage. We got in and made no adjustments to the frame because it is 16 by 9, matching the exact aspect ratio of our timeline. So we can check it if we want. We can leave it unchecked if we want. It really makes no difference. Normally, I just leave it unchecked because there's really no point. And then what I do is I simply say transcode. Now, I do want to draw your attention to something that has been asked in the past. 
Now you'll notice this clip is going to be 294 megabytes big. I'm just going to say transcode. What I want to do is just draw your attention to the fact that this clip, if we look at it in list view here, is 102 megabytes big. Now if I went and I actually found this piece of media, let me just reveal this file in my Avid Media Files folder, you'll see it's now 300 megabytes. And I was asked, is that normal? Is it normal to have a clip that was originally 100 megabytes, now 300 megabytes? What's important to keep in mind is that when we transcoded it, we transcoded it at a higher quality. This was an H.264 file, a very compressed format. When I transcode it, I want to make sure I transcode it at the best quality, not being ridiculous going 10 bit, but at the best quality so we don't add any more compression to the clip. We want to keep it as good of a quality as we can so there's no additional compression added to that clip that'll be noticeable when it's played back or exported. All right, so this is really going to wrap up our look at getting in and either consolidating or transcoding footage inside a Media Composer. We've covered the three main workflows when you're going to be consolidating or transcoding footage. We talked about offline in Media Composer and finishing in an external application like Resolve, like Assimilate Scratch. We talked about offline in the Media Composer and finishing inside a Media Composer. And last but certainly not least, we talked about the most common workflow, which is just linking to footage, transcoding it at a high resolution for you just to get in. Maybe you're just putting something together because you shot something that day. You need to put something together for a client output that evening. The last workflow that I showed you, transcoding at a high quality, even if you're working with lower quality footage, transcoding that footage at a high quality so that it always looks the best that it can, following these workflows will never ever steer you wrong. And always remember inside those consolidate and transcode settings, get into the habit of setting your raster dimension to the sources dimension, keeping that sources frame rate, and then choosing between your DNX HR codex, whether you're working at low res or whether you're going to be working at a higher res and standard or high quality codec. All right. As always, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this tutorial. And if you found it helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across social media. I always want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Video Guys. And don't forget, if you are looking for Media Composer licensing, you can find the links to the Video Guys website down in the show notes below. And as always, if you have a question, please don't hesitate to send me an email at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.